I would be among the first to admit that we made mistakes in government. I will be among the first to admit that there was corruption within previous Antigua Labour Party administrations. But I have to admit that the corruption that exists today under the UPP regime makes corruption under the previous ALP administration child's play, my dear people. I mean, this thing is explosive. There will be no job losses under the Labour Party administration. While there's moonlight and music and love and romance I now turn let's face to the water shortage that has plagued this country for some time And I say to you tonight that Before leadership matters I say to you tonight the that the water shortage that our people have been experiencing is an issue that belongs to a different age. And I say too, that we have made positive steps in order to resolve the water problem. And I guarantee you, that within 14 days, there will be increased water supply in this country. Let's face music and dance. A cornerstone of our general election campaign was the provision of affordable housing. Indeed, we promised 500 homes in 500 days. And we said to you that you would have gotten 500 homes in 500 days. Those with little or no vision said that it could not be done. Well, as your Prime Minister, I said to you that it can be done and that it shall be done. Let's face the music and dance. Let's face the music and dance. I mean, this thing is explosive. executive of the Antigua Barbuda True Labour Party. Yes, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. True Labour Talks is back again. Um, Vera Conover, the third chairman of the True Labour Party and co-host Lionel Nedwell. Um, it's been a while, over a month since we had our last episode um, due to the fact that I was traveling abroad. But we're here and we're committed and we are continue to enlighten and educate and inform the public on True Labour Talks. Um, it's a podcast, probably the only political podcast in Antigua or even probably the fact in the Leeward Islands. So what we are saying today is that True Labour is alive and well. Our campaign in rural south where I am the candidate for the True Labour Party is going pretty well. Lionel Nedwell, talk yes. to me. Yes, good afternoon to all listeners and I'm glad to be here with you again today. Uh, we have a number of sensitive issues that we are going to be discussing today. And as um, my co-host there just told you, we are going to start off with um, the, the campaign, which is going quite nicely there. I am so enthused about what happened uh, last week. Um, that's our first day out since you got back from abroad. Yes. And uh, we're so, so happy to see that we picked up right where we left off. Yeah, well, you see what actually we said we're just going to... Um, drive around and let people see our face and mm -hmm. ask them about how the hurricane treated them, you know. But actually people wanted to talk and you got so much information for them on what was going on in the community and the constituency. And it was better than we actually thought. That's right. Um, yeah. And that's where we left off, where people wanted to talk. 
we go and we visit some of these houses and you know sometimes we spend so much time more time that we had really planned to spend yeah just to drive but, through that was a, the original plan just to drive through yeah but you know after we get there you see that you know they just continue with the conversation and we are quite happy to accommodate them and and share their views and whatever information they need we pass it on and so forth so our campaign there is really and and and, and cock. It's nicely, it's going nicely, and I just do hope that um, the people will continue to maintain that sort of frame of mind uh, where they are very concerned about their future mm -hmm. and, um, and do what it takes to keep it on ball. Hey, Nedwell. Yeah. I was in New York and somebody oh. told me, uh, like a shoo shoo, yeah. tell me that the true Labour Party is defunct and it's no longer in existence. <laughs> Wishful so, thinking. So, what mean you doing campaigning? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's wishful thinking. <laughs> I hear two labor yeah. mash up and then uh, nothing happened and dead. They're going to radio station and TV station to uh, announce uh, the end. Uh, the demise the, the, of uh, the party the once burial. known as the Antigua Barbie, the true labor party. It's the burial. You know anything about that? Not, uh, well, you see, we are, it's to show you what they, you know, what they really want to happen to that third party that we, we, are, we, are, we have here. Mm. Um, they, and, uh, what I notice is that Antigua people seem as if they don't want a third party. Um, running in our election mm -hmm. the last time uh, some people uh, some well people. yeah some yeah qu but quite a few as well because mm -hmm. they're so indoctrined and the mindset of this third party stuff resonates among a lot of people mm -hmm. now the last election we went out there and persons was you know they were quite thrilled to be telling us you, you don't have enough uh, candidates and all that good stuff uh, even though you sound good and all that but you don't have enough candidates and nobody is making an effort you have all these intellectuals to come and be a part and, and do what it takes so you, you can see that is something that they wish for the third party to just you know get lost or disappear somewhere and you know they take it quite far even on the radio station that's true. Yeah, That's true. it was on the radio I station. This spoke of that. I came back to Antigua yeah. that a lot of the corrupt labor supporters and so coming up to me, and it's like they want the olive branch. They want you to come and sing Kumbaya with them and come back <laughs> in the fall. And you know, one, my wife went to see somebody, a government official, the week the week before I came back, and the individual was telling her, uh, "Oh, tell Via to come and see them, because." Um, apparently, Mr. Brown would mind if I become a member of the Antigua Labour Party. <laughs> and that's really nice of Mr. Brown and this individual that I'll be welcome back with, with, with open arms. You know what happened, Nedwell? Yeah. I think those arms are going to be spread apart for a very, very long time. And when the arm gets tired, put your arm down, go about your business. That is my advice. <laughs> <laughs> to corrupt labor, just go about your damn business and leave me alone. But you see, it shows you as far as they will go to break up the, the third party system. Yeah, you see, listen, they don't, they don't the, best, the best part, mm -hmm. the person tell my wife, uh -huh. when, after you made love to your husband, uh -huh. Tell him the true Labour Party, the anti Labour Party wants him back. <laughs> <laughs> There's a strategy to this thing too as well. Hey, so, hey, man. At my weakest, most tender yes, moment. Yes, bubble. Oh, oh this, I can't hey, call, call Caston right now. <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh, they they have a strategy. They really want to get rid of the third party. I, I find they're quite fearful. Mm -hmm. You see, because the pendulum politics that's been going on for years, a number of years, they mm -hmm. would like to continue that fear. Mm -hmm. That's their comfort zone. Very you true, see, very they, they, they go to parliament and they don't have to, to work. Mm -hmm. You know, they fall, just fall in line. They just tow party line. And that's what it's all about with them. Yeah. Now, a third party system is a different talking in parliament. So different parties have to go with the, with the, with the, 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 the argument intact. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what they're fearful of. Yeah, yeah it's very true. You know, mm -hmm. we have our, our network, our database. And for some reason, since the last election, I had so many people in my contact list. And it's only during the hurricane. I wasn't in Antigua for Irma. But when I was abroad, I started to post the latest on the news concerning the hurricane, the way it's going to hit and how far away it's going to be. And I have a feeling the whole, um, I have PCS, the, the system, the PCS system got shook up. Because a lot of people were contacting me um, during Irma, the hurricane coming. 
yeah. that I never heard from for four years. Oh, and one of the ladies like, hey, you remember me? Mm. I said, yes, this is you. I call her first and last name. Yeah. They said, oh, I just checking to see if you, you, you realize. Okay. I said, yes, I've been sending you all our podcasts uh-huh. and all the information concerning okay. the past. She said she never got them. And that was about 15 other people contacting me saying, hey, first of all, who are you? Yeah, okay. I said, yeah, it's Vera. Yeah. I said, what? Oh, I just know we seen you thing. I said, now nah, I've been sending you for over three years since the election ended. Yeah. I never stopped. And then I never stopped campaigning. Exactly, and they never got so it. even out of the darkness and the misery and of, the devastation of right. Irma, that's right. there is something good some comes good out. that they yeah, made contacts. And this, that's this right. last time we went to a campaign, we actually went to see some of them, you know? Yep, yep. Some yes, of I'm saying hi, hello to my friends right. over there at yes, Creekside. Yes. Hope yes. you enjoy the rest of your day. Hello to you. We'll be coming back around and seeing how things Not are with you and let you know what's going on with the party and our, mm-hmm. our community centre, you know? Yeah. Um, Ned, well, we have to move on to the next topic. Um, you want me to start with my um, article? Yes, or, yes. Or yeah, we that, that oh, we'll leave yours. We you save the best for last. Mm-hmm. We save the best for last. No, the Prime Minister, after our earthquakes, um, he went to the United Nations. And one of the parts I cannot stand, one of the characteristics of any individual I can say, whether it's a politician or a friend or family, is the hypocrisy. I personally cannot stand hypocrisy. Where you do something, but then you point hands at other people doing it. Right? <laughs> yep. And, and to the me, same boat. that... That surmises the Prime Minister's speech at the United Nations. Because I have an article here, United Nations Center. And this is what the article said. It's dated the 23rd of September 2017. Hurricane Irma erased footprints of an entire civilization on Barbary, the Prime Minister tells the United Nations. 23rd of September 2017, the Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbary, Gaston Brown, told the United Nations General Assembly, that after the largest storm ever in the Atlantic Ocean, quote, the island of Barbuda is decimated, its entire population left homeless, and its buildings reduced to empty shells. All right, that's yeah. how we start off. Yeah, which is not true. As of all its, as all its inhabitants were evacuated to Antigua in the wake of Hurricane Irma, in addition to providing shelter and basic necessities to the residents, the social services of Antigua are under great strain providing places with 600 additional children, medical services for the elderly, and a means of income for the able-bodied. Quote, for the first time in over 300 years, there is no, no permanent resident on Barbuda. The footprints of an entire civilization have been emasculated by the brutality and magnitude of Irma, unquote, he said. Wow, Mr. Brown stressed that Barbuda is not only a natural disaster, it is a humanitarian crisis that now consumes Antigua. Whatever position on climate change any nation takes, the evidence of global warming is now irrefutably stronger. He underscored, we are the least of the polluters. Here we say, yeah. we are the least of the polluters, mm-hmm. but the largest of the casualties. The unfairness, injustice, and inequality are painfully obvious, he added. He pointed out that according to preliminary estimates, rebuilding would cost Barbara about $250 million representing 50% or more of the country's gross domestic product GDP or approximately 1.5 billion. Antigua and Barbuda urgently requires the assistance of the international community, including international development and finance institutions to accomplish this vital task of rebuilding Barbuda, he said. Caribbean islands need to construct more resilient building and infrastructure, requiring international development and financial institutions to provide financing at concessionary rates without artificial impediments or costing lives and property would be too frightening to contemplate. Okay, he said his piece. But here's my take on this, Nedwell. Mm-hmm. It appears to me that the Prime Minister does not remember his actions in regards to global warming and degradation of the environment. It certainly does. Because they have that project on Guana Island. Mm-hmm. We need a project. We need a Yeah. Where just last year we heard from the environment division of the government that there was an Arawak settlement that Yidazang pulled over. There was no mention, there was no foul play, there was no cry of you're ruining the civilization right. of right. that that 
inhabited Antigua before the, the Europeans and the, the blacks came to Antigua. And wipe out the history as well. Wiped out the history. That's what he said now. For the first time in over 300 years, there is now no permanent resident in Barbuda. The footprints of an entire civilization have been emasculated by the brutality and magnitude of the Irma. So what about the Arawak settlement on Guana Island? That's right. That has been emasculated and been brutally and magnitude, and the entire so the footprints have been wiped out. That's so true. The Mao mangoes have been totally The mangoes have been decimated. Oh, that's because what I remember when they started the Eda project in 2015, they had the um, the launch. Right launch or the, the breaking the ground of the project mm -hmm. and in order to have the the little um, pontoon bridge get over to guana island they broke they smashed up some of the mangoes, the mangoes got messed which up. are sure. environmentally protected yeah. under our laws yeah. and all you heard from the prime minister and asset michael <laughs> was that it's only one or two mangroves but you were talking about now like you go to the united nations like you're the champion against global warming you know what I'm and the rising and of the sea levels and on from the, the melting of the polar ice caps <laughs> but all of a sudden no you don't remember what happened last under year under his watch under his watch under his watch that's what happened listen to what the prime minister said at the time you ready minute well yeah all right, here we go. This is the script. This was just after people were complaining right, 2015 about the mangrove. Yeah. And this is what the Prime Minister had to say to the people of Antigua and Barbuda. With all respect to those who have concerns in the environment, we respect the positions that they have taken. We respect the commitment to the protection of the environment. But my government does not need to be schooled on the protection of the environment. Arrogance. Arrogance. arrogance speaking out of nothing but ignorance you and stupidity for real do you remember that well when um you just started to clear up on the mainland right right, right? yeah and i believe it was members from the movement mm -hmm. went up there and took pictures of took the pictures, degradation a lot of pictures to take, yeah. and they said that mangroves were removed from the area that's right and the Prime Minister went up there with another guy, um, Southwell from DCA. This was just all last year. And they stated that no mangroves were damaged. And it came after the environments came on the radio and said, yes, mangroves were damaged. Because he only thought that mangroves, the only mangroves they are the ones that are in the water with their roots in the water. But they had to tell him they had the, which I didn't even know myself. Well, yeah. But they had the red mangrove and the black yeah, mangrove right. and the white mangrove. And yeah. apparently some of them look more just like bush. Mm -hmm. But they are mangroves and they are protected by our laws. That's so true. So, so it just goes to show you, he's saying, you don't have to tell him how to protect the environment. Yeah, they don't need a schooling. And but he, he went, went up there. And couldn't even identify. And confirmed that That's no right. mangoes were damaged and had to be told, yes, you did damage a mango. And be explained to what they were. <laughs> <laughs> but Veer, yeah, um, you spoke of him going to the UN uh, up in uh, North America. Yeah. And was talking about... Uh, the depletion and the wiping out of the homes in Barbuda. Yeah. Yeah. That was really misleading mm -hmm. because uh, it, uh, Barbuda, the homes in Barbuda weren't totally wiped out. No. I have an article here. Um, it says uh, Barbuda land ownership. Uh, What's the name of the article? Yes. What's, What's the name? name? Uh, What's the uh, that's, that's the one. Barbuda land ownership, a 200-year-old freedom put at risk mm -hmm. okay. following Hurricane Irma. Mm -hmm. And that's um, the headline of the article. Mm -hmm. And it says here, suspicion and frustration grow as Hurricane Irma. Evacuees find themselves unable to return home to Barbuda whilst the law protecting the island from private and foreign investment is dismantled. Okay. Now that is so awful because I don't see that is the right time mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. this to be happening. Right. Now, uh, it's, uh, it went further and it says on Wednesday 6th of September 2017, Barbuda, less known as Sister Isle of the Popular Resort Antigua, Isle, Popular Resort Island of Antigua, bore the full brunt of Hurricane Irma as it struck the Leeward Islands of the Eastern Caribbean. The island suffered uh, near total destruction, 95% of the island buildings were damaged, 60% of the population were rendered homeless, 
-hmm. and the two-year-old child was tragically killed. Antigua and, Antigua and all, on the other hand was relatively untouched. Right. Right. It went further to say, meanwhile, offers to help begin the flood into Antigua um, in, in from around the world. Skilled electricians, plumbers, builders, and carpenters from the Barbudan uh, diaspora, as well as individuals from England, Scotland, the US, Canada, offered even at their own expense to travel to Barbuda and assist with the building effort. Yet, in Antigua, these offers of support were largely ignored. Crates of AIDS were redirected to other Caribbean islands, and all independent efforts by Barbudan communities were blocked by Antiguan's authority, who preferred to organize the relief effort directly. Yeah. We, they weren't in no position to, to, to the, not, uh, not picking up on these offers, Via. Yeah. It was oh, a good no, thing no, to that, happen. That, 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 that is criminal. Of course it is. Yeah, yeah, it's is treason, that, that, This is, it, this is, is pure treason. And, and I, I hope, hope that the government will come and say, no, it, it never happened. happened. Yeah, of I course. hope they can prove that, that what you're saying is skilled, skilled technicians from the first world or the developed world, world as we call them now that's are right. coming and offering to assist, assist with you. Power. That's right. At their own expense. And you will say, no, 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 we want to be in control. Exactly. And you, you want, want your bureaucracy, bureaucracy in place. But control of what they do. You, know, you, know, you know what that's all, all is? <laughs> They're setting <laughs> up the landscape <laughs> to start teething. That exactly what it all is. All those donations that people are giving. That's right. I am asking the international community, do not give any money that is not made certain that can be accounted for at the end of the day. Put in your own mechanisms when you are giving grants mm -hmm. that they have to account for that money. That's right. Send down your own accountants and them to provide you with what was given, where, when, and how much. That's right. Because I believe this is a cash cow, and a lot of these politicians have they're going milk dollar it. signs in the eye. Yeah, they're going to milk it there. They're going to milk it. Yeah, All their the backhoes and their front loaders and their lorries are going to be over there in Barbuda and they're going to be getting top dollar That's so and true. putting that right in the money. But where, you see this offer of, of, of assistance mm -hmm. and by these um, skilled technicians and stuff like that. That's a contribution as well. That's, and that's worth money. Yeah, that's right. And if you see, it, reduce, it reduces the physical cash that they will need in hand. That's, that's correct. And this is what they don't want uh, to happen. They want to get the cash. They don't want no assistance like that. They want to appoint their own cronies and all that to go to do the work and at a fee. You see what happened, Nedwell? Election is on the two years away. <laughs> yes, sir. And the Prime Minister and Corrupt Labour Party yeah. are basically saying, let us start to... Well, you remember the 500 houses, 500 never went anywhere. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that was a total work. failure. So this is a way to get the international world to put money into their hands exactly. and for them to give people work That's and right. they get in claims that That's they provide exactly. work. That's exactly. Gain mileage from that so within their, their political campaign. Well, when yeah. the Chinese come to Antigua to build our airport, right? Yeah. It's Chinese building. Yeah. The airport. Yeah. yeah. They're building that stuff down in um, Grace Farm. King George, yeah. yeah. King George, the fifth mm -hmm. grounds there. It's Chinese workers. Yeah. So now a lot of people from the Western world come and say they want to assist. Mm -hmm. And he say no. No, we don't that's want all part right. of that. We Don't want to handle that. this whole thing. You know, it, 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 it's the sort of a out of line there. I, I cannot see it. I cannot see that you're getting assistance in this time of need and you're rejecting it there. Yet still, you're going to have to use physical cash to pay for what these guys are going to come and do for free. Yeah. And this is what I can't understand. These, these guys, you know, last night I was looking at something for, on, on the line as well. And it says, um, uh, the, a generation is going to come on earth uh, uh, that they are total idiots. <laughs> and I'm just, you know, uh, there's that's a that's part on the need for comment. Mm -hmm. And I said, the commented that it appears if we are here already. <laughs> you know, and it's, sort of, it's true there. Because yeah. you're getting this sort of assistance from the professionals, from people abroad who are planning to use their own funds in order to get there and whatever they have to do. 
and you are rejecting saying that you want to be in control of it yeah yeah, yeah. that doesn't make any sense at all you know it's hurt and then after that now you start to think about how government is going to foot all this bill that would have been a reduction in what you have to pay yeah, yeah. out you're getting three technicians assistance to put the infrastructure of Barbuda back together it just shows that it is not their priority yeah, yeah. they don't seem as if they want the Barbuda people to go back home they want to be in control of the whole thing because they want to do it at their own timing that will benefit them even as I said election is just a little under two years and you know it's all kind of benefits that can come from this in terms of physical cash in hand and so forth and these people are now over here oh but you know we i'm wondering um, how this voting process is going to go if they're still over here good, good, good question. Good question. I, 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 you know is a number of things that's now coming to mind and you know to go to the u.n and mislead uh, to go up in north america wherever he was mm -hmm. and mislead the people to be telling them that Barbuda is totally wiped out, all the homes are totally wiped out, when 40% of the homes are still standing. Now, the, the $250 million does that um, uh, was calculated for all the homes being wiped out. Uh, the 40% the, the, the wasn't, how, how does that go over here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of things that's really not really making much sense. And um, the prime minister, he's behaving like some authority and this whole going on, this global warning and uh, um, warming and telling people that um, his government doesn't need any any schooling and, 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 and stuff like that. On the environment. Yeah, you know, the prime minister is so arrogant, but yet still nothing sensible is coming out of his mouth there. I just can't understand why he's like this. I don't know if he knows that he's hurting the island when he's doing that, mm -hmm. but um, he is. You know, yeah, people so. start to see him in a different light, in the light that this guy is an arrogant guy who is selfish and all that good stuff, you know. Uh, the, the, the article went further to talk with the law, and the law originates from an official tenure system established following the islanders' emancipation from slavery. Mm -hmm. Now, whereby land acquired will be handed down to the um, descendants and the bushland will be held in commonage. The freedom was challenged multiple times in years after mm. emancipation. That's right. But against all odds, survived through the independence of 1981. And I do hope that that's, it will survive um, further on For, too. Further? Yes, because... Through all lifetimes and future generations. Of course. You I see, can't see you depriving people of their land. You mm. know, this wasn't a haphazard thing. They went to, to, to England and they discussed. They had this whole thing was discussed. Yeah, in a form you know, of talks independence. Of course. And this is what it came down to. Mm -hmm. And you were constantly challenging these people to take their land. Why do you want the people to challenge them? Even that with um, Packer and De Niro. Yeah. Remember how they had that election they had over in Barbuda? Yeah. Where Arthur Nibs gets up before the meeting and tells the people and them, well, mm -hmm. if you are, we, we said we're going to bring you all investors and here are yeah. the investors. But um, if you all don't take this offer, um, hmm. the barbers goes, oh, don't have any money. And by next month, you all are not going to have any money to uh, the idea. The How idea do you want to tell people you. that you know before saying? they're going to vote? Y uh, Isn't that an unfair advantage? Total, you totally you inform unfair. those people of, of the course. financial situation That's right. a week? You only found that information That's right. before you went to that meeting or that election? You know what I'm saying? But, um, Nedwell, I just mm. want to make a, a point clear. I yeah. mean, we pull back, it's, a, it's Antigua and Barbuda, and it seems like if the, the, the politician, the, the political establishment, mm -hmm. is playing us off one against the other. Yes, yes. To the is. Antiguans, they say that Barbudans are ungrateful. Mm -hmm. And to the Barbudans, which I've heard since I was a little boy, they say, we they want say that Antiguan people want their land. The idea, yeah. I want to tell the Barbudans <laughs> that is not so. And you have to deal with it logically. The majority yeah. of Antiguans, the 80 to 100 thousands of, Ant of people popularly uh, uh, inhabiting uh, Antigua, right. yeah. have not visited Barbuda. Mm -hmm. that's the majority true. of Antiguans or people living in Antigua have not gone over to your island. That's so true. The majority of the people who have gone over to your island 
have visited once or just a few times. That's right. Me personally, I visited in 2003, February sometime. That was the first and the last time up to now. One time too for me. One the majority time. of people who go over there go over, I think, Antiguans go over for uh, Caravana. Caravana, yeah. You understand? Yeah. So mm -hmm. pick sense out of nonsense. Mm -hmm. It is not the Antiguans you have a problem with. Antiguans will stand with you if you attack the politicians that's right but don't stand against want the land because that is so far-fetched it's insulting to me and i've heard it and i tell you i was offended and then when i went over there and spoke to them i could see where they're coming from is out of frustration yes yes, yes and they make a the general said anti want our land yeah but if you that's say the politicians told. over the antigua central government most of the time is coming from the corrupt labor party want the land i am fully in agreement with you it has been proven in the past and even more so just what has happened since irma and in, in what they say to the to the antique is that oh the barbarians are 1600 of them uh, 1800 and that came from from barbuda um since um the, the storm so, uh, they're all ungrateful ungrateful people how but can you find 1800 a whole population whole pop uh, every last eh? man woman and child is ungrateful what did what did you go over there I, ungrateful, ungrateful bush, water ungrateful bush, ungratefulness in the coconut over there yeah they have a tea that's it uh, cannot, let us drink just be this become ungrateful there's no way you can i mean in every Aye. society in every community you will find amongst the populace the, the personality some people are ungrateful yeah. but to to just generalize that all barbarians are great so yeah. i am not going to subscribe yeah. to that it's uncalled for no, 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 it no, that's is not called clear. divide and rule and that's what and they're that doing is there. what the politicians are doing yep. between antiguans and barbarians and at the end of the day the antiguans and the barbarians are fighting one another and the politicians are making off with the land and with the money that's exactly what you happened. see what this is nedwell mm -hmm. this goes back to our roots in Africa now. Yeah. It's tribalism. Yes, it is. It's tribalism. It is. In the, it is for the tribe of the Antiguans versus the tribes of the Barbudans. That's right. If we said we made a conscious effort since 1967 on associated statehood and then even more so on the 1st of November 1981 right. to be a unified That's right. state, That's right. Antigua and Barbuda, then we have got to put aside that tribalism. All of the differences. Because that That's tribalism right. As you can see, it's happened in Africa, has mm -hmm. led to debt. That's it true. has led to That's ruined true. countries oh, yes, yes, and ruined yes. economies. Oh, yes. Remember yes. what? In 82, 84, they mm -hmm. had that, that, that civil war in Rwanda. That's right. Remember when That's, they, they, uh, they yeah. get the, 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 the Hutsi and the Tutsi, the Tutsi or whatever? <laughs> yeah, the Tutsis. They, they, they gave them the Tutsis and they, had, they gave them, one yeah. gave the other one, um, ah, these machetes and attack him. That's He's right. He's a roach. They're yes. no good. Yeah. And at the end of the day, they said that there were one people before they were colonized exactly. by the French. They were. But what happened, there were a group of the tribe from a certain region that were lighter skinned, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And they told them, you are of a more intellectual capacity they, they use than that. the Hutu. They, yes, so they, the Tutsi were given the better jobs and were considered to be yep, more intellectual yep, of complexion a higher class. Because of complexion. But at the end of the day, uh, what the what if if the homologist, I can't remember the term, forgive yeah. me for, for my lack of the, the proper word. Uh, the people going into your ethnicity said that in when they checked the DNA and the genetics of the Hutsi and the Tutsi. One people. Hutu and the Tutsi. Yeah. There was no difference. One people. It yeah. was made up by the colonial powers to That's divide, right. and, divide rule. and rule. That's they exactly divide right. and conquer you. That's then right. they, they yeah. use it to divide and, and rule, rule you. And That's that right. is tribalism of that course. the politicians in Antigua are using between the Antiguan and Barbudas. And I'm asking you to stop it. it because is. you cannot generalize and say all Barbudans are ungrateful. All Antiguans want your land. No, if it's really. one man, you can say they want your land. Uh, yeah. Me? I have seen and then, well, what about you? Yeah, one time we <laughs> haven't been back since, you know, and there are many caribanas, there are other people say, come on, come. We, I haven't been back since. Yeah, yeah. These are the people land. It's their place, we yeah. And they should be able to live comfortably in it without mm -hmm. any disruption and, and all that good stuff. Yeah. And, and our politicians are not allowing them to do that, we Yeah, it, it's a very sad situation it in Antigua and Barbuda, right? But mm -hmm. I believe that if the Barbudans can hold firm, no, they've got them in a good position where they mm -hmm. are no longer on one island. That's right. And they're all over Antigua, mm -hmm. and they're displaced. Some of them are Vivian Richards Stadium, oh, some in private homes, mm -hmm. some are renting places, mm -hmm. some of them are down at multi-purpose center. Yeah. Right? 
and the other place on Nugent Avenue, the technical school on Nugent Avenue, Avenue. right. Mm -hmm. They have separated them, and what they're going to do is to work on a group up here and tell that one you don't want that, and you know, they're going to divide them. I'm asking the Barbiers to remain united. Very a much lot so. of us Antiguans will stand with you and say, no, no, as no, no, no. As no, long no, as no. they're united, it's just, we will. It's just, it's just bad mindedness. Absolutely. They see that the land over there is expensive land. Mm -hmm. And if you start to put a monetary value towards it, which hasn't been really done because it's a communal land, and everybody right. gets a piece of it. Mm -hmm. They know it's multiple of millions That's right. that land is worth. Oh, yes, man. And yes, everybody yes. now after Irma wants to cash in. They want a piece the of the action. has his own investment over there. His wife went over there and supposedly this was a start a hotel. They mm -hmm. don't have a block and pass a number. Mm -hmm. His aim is to get the block and pass a number for that piece of land that he says he's going to put a hotel on. And then he can get the financing. Exactly. Right? Then he can sell. That's right. But right now he can't really do that. It's no, difficult no, because it's communal right. land. That's right. You understand? That's so true. And that, that's what they, they, they're trying to do there. Mm -hmm. They're trying to just work this into the mainstream where, you know, you, you, you have to go to bank to get loans and stuff like this. And next thing you know, you can't pay back the bank and the bank come and foreclose. Yeah. And, and sell you out. And oh. the bank is not going to discriminate who they're selling to. Who is Bob? You Where oh, do you come from, Bob? You're not a Bob, you so we can't, we can't sell you. No, it's not going to going. work like that. They're going to sell to get back their money. Of course, their yeah, business. So if you come from Timbuktu and you have the cash, mm. you'll be getting that piece of land. Yeah. So this whole 200 years policy, years, yeah, it's gone. It's gone, it's totally out of the window. A way of life. You know, this is totally bad-minded business. Very much so. Absolutely much bad-minded. So we yeah. in the True Labour Party are against what they're doing to the Barbudans. We will stand with them. We believe that the Barbudans and the Antiguans can coexist peacefully, That's beneficially. True. We use our islands, or small islands in the Atlantic Ocean Caribbean Sea to benefit future generations of Antigua and Barbuda. There should not be this suspicion between two islands two different well they have their own civilization or their own culture course, over there too they have a life. and we have to get rid of the suspicion because the colonials have put that suspicion to rule us that's right divide and rule and no now the same black leaders that took our brothers over, our black brothers our black brothers yeah pick up right have where they picked left up off. those dirty colonial political tactics that's right to use it against the antigua and the the barbians yeah. you really must fight relevant. you must fight you see what happened my grandfather is the one that is credited you know for all his work to put an end to colonialism mm -hmm. but I, I i was thinking in new york when he put an end to colonialism and the, the full stop was really on the first of november 1981 and even independence did he have in mind that all we were going to replace colonialism with was a black face in a bank yeah. or a black man in parliament yeah. or a black man over our economy that's or our finances? Is yeah. that all superficial? That's how they have it. Because that's what if they think. we don't have the black man in there mm -hmm. who is doing a good job, mm -hmm. then what is the difference between a white face or a black, black face? face. Yeah. What is the Same difference? behavior. Because what I am seeing that is being done to the Barbudans is colonialism. Absolutely. Yeah. They Nothing want to manipulate. Different. They want to have their say on what happens over there. That's right. It is the Bible teach, talks about covetousness. Mm -hmm. And this is on a biblical example, portion. Yeah. A typical biblical proportion example. to what has happened here. That's right. Leave the Barbudans with their land alone. I believe if the Barbudans do not feel threatened, do not have that suspicion, mm -hmm. they'll be willing to share, share with us. Of course. Of course. That's right. You know, that is you, it. Yeah, you're getting the people all paranoid and all that. That is, that is the thing, and I don't blame them, but the only thing I'd advise the, the Barbudans if you, you need Antiguans on your side to support much your so. cause. I, 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 right? Yeah. And we, don't I, go and talk about Antiguans want to land. None you of that offend stuff. us we don't. with that statement. As much as you love Barbuda, we love Antigua. Very much okay? so. Yes. If you say 
Those greedy, good-for-nothing politicians who want your land? Hey, me right up there. Me actually, I'm not up there with you. I'm ahead of the line. It's the truth. <laughs> it's the truth. But, we, you know, I want to say, um, first, I want to say to these Barbudans that I'm so sorry for what had happened. Yeah, yeah, it's tragic. I'm just extremely saddened to know that this went down in, on the island. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, as my co-host is telling you, mm -hmm. we Antiguans are here willing to stand up with you. Mm -hmm. to protect your land because when the rain falls, it doesn't fall on one man's house. Next and what happened to you, God knows what will happen to us later or has on. Been hap or has happened to us. Oh, that's right. These or same how guys. they bring in Yida. Yeah, okay, then. Remember Yida came in and that's talked about right. um, for dustbins, those will rise right. like a then phoenix rise or you phoenix. fall in the dustbins that's right. like, uh, like the previous administration. So, so true. Divide and rule. That's what did Lester Bird have to say about those comments? Mm -hmm. What did Gaston Brown, Malwin Joseph, that's right. Robin Yearwood, Asset Michael, no, they, they all sat back and said nothing. They were down with it, yeah. yeah. They all were down with Divide it. Divide and rule. That's They're so putting true. up colors yeah, over in Antigua of yeah. red and blue. They're the same people doing the same things. Same nonsense. Yeah, same thing. Same Nobody came out politically. That's so I think Baldwin Spencer did say something against it, but he is in opposition. He just had three seats. Yeah, you know and I'm that's swing nothing right now. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. But nobody said anything. And that's that right. is the part where I'm saying, that's look right. and see what is really happening over here since you're over here now. That's right. And realize that you do have a lot of support and you're not fighting no. on your own. You no. have a lot of... We are here. We are here with you who are concerned about what they are Very doing much so, and you, you just have to stand up, and if you stand up, we will hold you up. Yeah, so yeah. all it Amen is. Amen to that. Amen to that. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, sir. Nedwell, um, mm -hmm. overall, I see that the economy of Antigua and Barbuda is in a very, very bad state. Oh, yeah. Two months ago, we heard about um, the fighting between the Prime Minister and Wood Stewart over Sandals Resorts. Oh, yes. And he was talking about how the... Um, how they, was it sales tax or some tax yeah, that they weren't they, they, paying they, they the tax on time? Tax. That was with the previous administration and now you want the money. And all you used that. to hear them as ZDK, these, <laughs> these semi literates from um, the Labour Party coming, you know, the acolytes. Yes, the, the, the cronies coming. You can hardly yeah, identify yeah, which money. is which. You have a gear, yeah, money, I want our money. Yeah, them foolish. You know? And then you realize that. It's 700 workers down there that are no longer yeah. employed for the next five months. That's right. That's right. And that I hardship. honestly believe had the Prime Minister sat down with Mr. Stewart privately and not made it a public back and forth, mm -hmm. that something could have been come, uh, an arrangement could have come. You have to give a man, make him save face. That's so true. He had an agreement from the government that those taxes would be waived. Tell him no, it can't happen like that because we have other investors who are wanted it. We cannot continue along that line. That's so I would have told him no, but I'd say, okay, we'll take this, this sort of concession for a limited period of time and mm -hmm. go ahead about your business. Mm -hmm. Always let people save face. Don't go in there because you're the prime minister, you have the power, and talk down to people and bully people just because you have the power. And you see what happened. Just last month, even St. Lucia, who also had some similar arrangement where Sanders Resorts got um, tax exempt, continued to waive the tax. That's true. And their workers are employed. But now what we have, Nedwell, is 700 workers on the breadline, plus two major hurricanes have decimated Barbuda and Maria, which has caused some damage also. That's so true. That's true. But yeah. we, you see, yeah. I have a problem too with this waving stuff that went on with sandals. Mm. Because then, if you're waving the taxes, yeah, yeah. yeah, you don't pick up government taxes and keep any portion of it. It's just being waived. And then your rates will be seen more attractive because correct. the tax is not included. Correct, correct. correct. So you're going to tell me that you're going to charge the tax, you collect it, and you keep. 65% of government money, Antigua people money? It was craziness. What, what kind but of arrangement uh, is that? That was under the former administration of the United yeah, Progressive Party. The idea of, yeah. I think they explained it to something like the, the government had done away with um, PIT. Uh -huh. <laughs> and um, they, no, they had introduced the sales tax. Right. And this was a tax which was um, hotel tax or something like that, which was there. But they got away with it when they introduced the sales tax. That's right. So Sanders were not getting that sort of savings any longer. Okay. So it was, it was extinguished yeah. because they introduced the sales, the sales tax, tax and came into the play. PIT. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So they got away, they took away those taxes. Right. So okay. Sanders went to them to say, okay, well, 
we're, we're not, not getting, getting that sort of savings any longer. Mm -hmm. What can you do for us? Uh -huh. Mr. Lovell, Bob and Spencer, and Mr. Lovell decided that they're going to let them hold up a certain you, percentage you, of the no, sales. No, you can't do that. Percentage. It's the people's money. When it you was, collect it, it, it automatically wrong, becomes. Yes. Dead wrong for them to have done that. Absolutely. You should have given them a concession. Yeah, but not that. that. You don't know that. that, that that's not to totally that form. That's overboard, there. Yeah, yeah, the 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 uh, method that they went about to give totally them some economic value mm -hmm. was completely asinine. Yeah, yep, Anyway, the damage is done. Yeah, right. Yeah, and it government is, what is it continuous. Is. Yes, absolutely. Had it been me, why well, have you known it would have been my grandfather, even less the bird? Uh -huh. That matter would have been dealt with extreme sensitivity, knowing the amount of workers that Sandals Resorts employs. That's right. They are the largest private employer in Antigua. Okay. The largest employer is the government of Antigua. Mm -hmm. And after that, it is Good Stewart right. Sanders Resort. That's so true. You understand? Mm -hmm. In addition to that, Veranda said they're going on um, hiatus also, and they're going to be laying off their workers until they do their renovations That's also. right. Another 200 it is plus. 1,000 workers. Yeah. Are on the poverty line, That's right. plus the damage in Barbuda That's right. and Maria, and we are still two months before the hurricane season and comes to an end. And we the irony about this: we don't have unemployment insurance, uh, unemployment right. benefits, and so on. So yeah. you yeah. can't go and get it for the, those five months. They can imagine the hardship there. Yeah. Even the fact that the payment into your for your social security for your That's late right. age in that is reducing that and all. That's right. So you carry no less. Even in addition, what has happened from Maria to Dominica, yeah. where our a lot of our uh, grown, grown provisions come, come from. from that's right. You understand? Yeah, that's where we food. We are in a very tricky situation. Very, very, very tricky. And yeah. the the lack of foresight, the complacency, um, our government did not have plans in place. Because if that hurricane had hit Antigua, hmm. we're not talking about 1,600 yeah. people left yeah. without a dwelling, you know. We're talking 10, 20, 30, Thousands. and potentially up. Thousands, Thousands of persons. And I do not believe that this government had any plan in place if Irma had hit Antigua and Barbuda. Not at all, Vera. If there, there's no plan in place for 1,600 people, there were no plan in place. And that, mm. that, the plan would entail Barbuda as well, the persons, because we are the ones now who are taking care of the situation. Yeah. So if we, there were any plans at all, the plans would have been exercised at this particular point in time. And now we see how confusing and chaotic this whole thing has gotten. It's, it's crazy. There's no plans. We don't have any things in place. Our economic is just totally, and we're talking about economic powerhouse. We, mm -hmm. through labor, spoke of an economic plan that we were going to put in place to increase and pay off our debts and all that good through stuff. Through the yeah. legalization of marijuana for um, of medical course. marijuana industry but and yeah. so on and so forth. But because we talked about corru um, corruption or fight um, on corruption where we are going to actually... Um, Criminalize right, the that's tender right. Act. Uh, that's so right. that the all those tenders the tendering, that's right. that wasn't done that's so true. by law, it's supposed to be done yeah. to get government contracts. That's you right. know what's going to happen, Nedwell, uh, over in Barbuda? All those people who are going to build contractors over there. Yeah. You think those yeah, are going out to tender? All the equipments and all that. They're going to be millionaires. After all this. the cronies, yeah. for the politicians, uh, yeah. they're going to have contracts. Yeah, they're going to have a field tender. over here. They are going you see to what happened? That. that happened before with the fencing scandal. Absolutely. You know? And it's happening all over again. Absolutely. I would like to ask the Prime Minister, are all the contracts to rebuild Barbuda, mm -hmm. will they be going out to tender? Mm -hmm. Or do you have your individuals, specific individuals who are already targeted for it? That's so true. But you know? we, as I we said just earlier, dear, that we have the, all this in place, our manifesto speak of it. Mm -hmm. But because we didn't have 17 candidates there, we didn't get the opportunity to exercise a better policy. Yeah. And this is what Antigua people have to pay attention from this point here. It's yeah. a little less than two years for the next election coming up. You have to be very concerned. You have to get concerned because you see what's going on around here. You see what went on around here with Eda and all this stuff. We losing what we're selling out our lands and all that good stuff. You have yeah. to be very concerned and pay attention. When a, a party come to you with a policy, a great policy in place, we can't equate it to you know, have 17 candidates. You can't farm government. Get push the policy. It's a policy to benefit you, yeah. the people. 
So we, uh, the, pe the people too has to play a part. And I we keep on... Part and the people oh, are yes. part to blame yes. for what has happened. Yes, yes. they were hoodwinked, they were bamboozled, mm. but a lot of them are older individuals who have been around this political Very much um, so. That's right. Um, like, environment yeah. and who have, oh, have voted in multiple elections That's right. and ought to be aware of what was at stake. That's right. And I fear that if it continues like this on the corrupt Labour and United Progressive Party... Until you will fall apart. Until you will fall apart. Absolutely. But we are, um, I know we spoke of economic policy. I know last went went out there when we went to campaign, yes. Yes. and we spoke of the um, marijuana issue. Yes. Now yes. there are quite a few people out there still they don't understand it. They still have a stigma in it, and the the the, the, um, the cannabis. We read and, that all on, on on Friday. That's right. And I'm looking at a, a, an article here that's saying that six ways to use have marijuana that you will never expect. Okay. There are a number of ways that you can utilize marijuana here. Mm. And the, the, the way how they stigmatized it, you know, mm. will let people... It is not, not just for smoking. No. That's what we're saying. Yeah. Ropes and all these good stuff. Oh, and then now we're talking about by the fuel... That, excuse me, that bags, that's, hats. That's right. You know, Shoes. batteries and all that good stuff. So the, the, the marijuana plant can do a lot for your economy, Via. It's not, it has nothing to do with smoking. But you know, Via, what I um, actually realized too and noticed is that most of these substances, Via, that, 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 you know, after they're being legalized and stuff like that, it does increase the usage. Yeah. You know, as a matter of fact, in some most cases, it decreases the usage because some of the excitement of not, you know, in, in illegal no more. Yeah. Uh, yeah like that, and illegal and, you know, some enough to bother with it. You know, yeah. people even bother. Yeah, so to say that everybody could go, go light up on street, can't it, can't illegal, no. No, yeah, I, I don't, I don't no it's nothing that. like that, Via. It's nothing yeah, like that. We'll, so. we'll deal with uh, marijuana again on our next episode or um, mm -hmm. on, on Saturday. Mm -hmm. On Variety Radio, we go further into it in our second hour. Oh, yes, yes. Because I do want to address the Rastafarian community. Yes. I do want to inform them what we plan to do in our manifesto to enhance their status in our society mm -hmm. and to, to avoid the, the, the oppression mm -hmm. and the persecution and the prosecution that they be of the Rastafarian yes. community because of marijuana. Yeah. So we will go into further details um, on Saturday about the marijuana right. industry that we envision and how we can assist right. the Rastafarian community. That's right. Because I, that is another community I believe they have been used, they have been ma manipulated, it's divide and rule mm -hmm. every election. Some of them come and say they're going to legalize it and then they just forget, forget it. about them. That's right, they just forget it. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so in that well, um, we have about another seven minutes. I'd like you to say a few words. Yeah, yeah, again, uh, the people of Antigua and Barbuda, they see what's been happening to them for years. Uh, you just said it. They, they've been fooled many a times. You've been, a lot of promises been made. And when you hold up your end of the bargain, they just renege on you. And, and, and that's the end of that. And the people need to learn that, you know, you can't once bitten, twice shy. You cannot have this happening to you time and time again. You have to take a step back. Look and see what's happening. Look, see where it's taking you. And take, make the necessary adjustments. In this case, it's the politicians promise you things that you know they're not going to deliver. You watch them doing the same things. Look at our roads. They're only going, you're going to see, just before the election, there's going to be a lot of sugar cakes out there and all that good stuff. And this has been happening time and time again. So it goes to show you that they haven't changed their attitude. It's going to be the same behavior. You're going to be promised 500 houses in how many days. You're going to be promised all these nice sounding things. But when time comes to deliver, it's going to be the same thing that you have faced over the years. No delivery. So ladies and gentlemen, you need to be quite concerned of your future. You need to be quite concerned of your children and your children's children's future. And you make the necessary steps in order to rectify what's going on at this particular time. Now, one more thing. You see all these people migrating to Antigua. You see the mishaps and the number of persons that 
we haven't even expected might end up living here in Antigua. So you know the hardship is even going to get a little harder. So we have to troubleshoot and you have to be quite critical of the, what's happening and make the necessary adjustments there. And that's my take on this whole take of how people go about right, deal, right. dealing with um, our elections. So we are, in terms of this, I, I do hope that on, on the next election, people will realize that it's not towing the party line anymore. It has nothing to do with allegiance and all that good stuff. It just has something to do with the policy. I spoke of this a little earlier. Mm -hmm. If a, you see a good policy, work with it. Yeah, yeah. You can't come up and talk about allegiance and my family been towing this line for how many years and all that. It's not working anymore. And if it's not working, you can't go along with it. Your family could have a, a store and that where they hire certain people in their store. It was making profit over the years and all that good stuff. So all is well. But then the store started not making no profit. The, you can't even find how your stock went and all that good stuff. You can't maintain the same workers in your store. You have to get rid of them, bringing new workers and find people who are going to look out for your interests. So, so how, do you, how do you justify this? Yeah. This is not justifiable way you are saying, that, look, hey, party line being told by my family. You're hurting yourself and you're hurting the rest of the nation there. This is, not a, this is not a nice way to go. So I am asking you people, when you go out there, or even before you go out there, when you get with your friends and you speak, you know, you, you speak with some sort of conviction of, you know, you want the country to move on. You know, not that this party and, and the blue and the red and all. All these things have come to an end with this blue red business. No, yeah. this is not that and it's not about that. Very true. It's Very about true. moving on the country. It's about able to make people can live comfortably you know and all this good stuff. That's so, really not what I say. Yeah. Somebody is asking me, oh, you know, um, I saw a lady. Where was it now? Mm. Um, down by the magic squad. I went in there Monday or Tuesday last week mm. and a young lady came up to me and tell she was la she a labor party supporter over my Malo but she support me and you know um she's with upp mm -hmm. and if i get in with upp Ooh. that i would be able to advance wow myself where <laughs> i need to be i tell her where do i need to be i, I am where i need to be That's you right. know why because i am beyond alp and That's upp right. i don't pass that i've yeah. evolved That's you know right. they say like the um the 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 lava uh, the caterpillar yes. um, metamorphosizes that's into right. beautiful you know, you, you, uh, butterfly. That's right, the stage. Well, I, I am beyond that lava that's stage. The stage. God, <laughs> you put that stage. I'm a beautiful butterfly. That's right. I have that's passed that's ALP. You know, I've been there, right. tried that, done that. Mm. I came home 2002 and had the ten, the full 10 years of the UPP. I mm. didn't know many of them. I knew some of them probably by name alone. Mm. But probably the majority of the, the, the candidates yeah, I did, I did okay. not know because mm. I just came back home after 20 years abroad. Mm -hmm. And had the UPP done a quarter of what they had mentioned in their manifesto that they would have done for the people of Antigua and Barbuda, They'd be safe. they would have still been in power. They would be there safe. There was no way corrupt labor could have taken them That's out. So true. Just on the history of the nonsense that had happened right. in the Labour Party, the years. they could have thrived and survived. Oh, yes. they would, they would but safe. they went down the same stupid same part, part of part. divide and rule in and the, uh, uh, well we are in a power now and I have to get rid of them because then they get all this and then they corrupt <laughs> but what we're doing isn't corrupt. Yep. Look at the Golden yep. Grove Community yeah. Centre. Yeah. So I'm asking Antigua and Barbie the people let us leave tribalism back in Africa mm -hmm. and let us move on because yep. it is not pretty when that tribal you see the other day in Kenya. Yeah. They, were, they nearly started up because of that election. Absolutely. And they had to, they, they calm it down. The courts gave a, um, a, a verdict that they that. have to go back to the post. That's right. That's it. more chop up of and shut up and stuff. Slitting up throats and all that. You know, stuff. and burn up. They love for burn and put tire on people's oh. head. So <laughs> kind of. let us move away from that. Yeah. Um, the people of Antigua and Barbuda need to stay united. We need to unite and we need to look at the common enemy. The common enemy isn't the colonial, the white man with an English accent. It is our own oh, brothers brother and man. sisters and brother. family members mm. and neighbors. The idea. 
the enemy for the people of Antigua and Barbuda to exist peacefully and to enjoy our lands hmm, hmm, is the present hmm. government of Antigua and Barbuda. That is where the enemy is. That's and right. we need to fight to get them out of office That's so right. that we can live peacefully, happily ever after. Goodbye, Antigua and Barbuda, until we come again next week on True Labor Talks. Have a good week. Bye, Bye for now. now. A buzzer took a monkey for a ride in the air. The monkey thought that everything was on the square. The buzzer tried to throw the monkey off of his back, but the monkey grabbed his neck and said, Now listen, Jack. Straighten up and fly right. Straighten up and fly right. Straighten up and fly right. Cool down, Papa, don't you blow your top. Ain't no use in diving. What's the use of diving? Straighten up and fly right Cool down, Papa, don't you blow your top The buzzer told the monkey, you are choking me Release your hold and I will set you free The monkey looked the buzzer right dead in the eye And said, your story's so touching, it sounds just like a lie Straighten up and fly right Straighten up and stay right Straighten up and fly right Cool down, Papa, don't you blow your top Choking me, release your hold And I will set you free The monkey looked the buzzard right dead in the eye And said, your story's so touching It sounds just like a lie Straighten up and fly right Straighten up and stay right Straighten up and fly right Cool down, Papa, don't you blow your top Straighten up and fly right Straighten up and stay right Straighten up and fly right Cool down, Papa, don't you blow your time